Hello and welcome to today's Facecast. <clears throat> we are in the book of Proverbs. Don't often visit Proverbs. Wonderful book of sayings. <clears throat> you can probably hear my dog barking in the background. Probably means the postman's about to arrive with a proverbial letter, no doubt. Um, <clears throat> what we're talking about here, in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7, it says, The memory of the righteous will be a blessing, but the name of the wicked will not. Proverbs often usually contrast two extremes, two different aspects of life, the righteous and the wicked in this case. Um, and it, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it, to us that the name of the, of the righteous will be a blessing to us. That is, those who have said or think or do live the right sort of lives, the lives that God would have us live, those people are going to benefit us in our lives. They will be a blessing to us. Now, as I say that, you might call to mind somebody who you think of in that way. It might be your spouse, it might be your mother or your father, it might be um, a relative, a friend, whoever it might be. You can probably call to mind someone who is righteous in the eyes of God, who is a good person living a good Christian life and how they have blessed you. Have they given you stability and strength? Have they given you compassion and care and understanding? Uh, do they exist as something of a role model for you? Well, all of these different things, the righteous people can and will be in our lives. And they're very necessary because we all need those around us to whom we can look for an example of how to live our lives. That's how we pass on generation to generation from one part of society to another, an understanding of the people that we are. And we here in Britain are very fortunate to have a lot of righteous people around and about. And there's evidence for that. The evidence is that people from all over the world want to come here to live because they know that in Britain they'll get a fair deal. They'll get opportunity. They'll get a helping hand. And that's because we have a Christian ethos running through our country. Not everybody recognises it. Not everybody pays attention to it. But everybody appreciates it. The fact that we have a health service which looks after us physically and mentally too. We have a, a legal service which we can all apply to and have there ready to defend us. We have a police service which serves everybody. We have a democracy where we can have a say in the way that our country is run. All of these are good things that other people, some other people in the world, are denied and they want to come and live here if they can and access this good life that we have, this good Christian heritage life. The righteous are, the bless are a blessing to others, but the wicked are not. What does it say? But the name of the wicked will not. And you can think of wicked people. Uh, who might we normally think of as wicked people? People who kill other people, who end up as prisoners for the crimes they committed. Thieving, uh, all sorts of different things that happen. And our prisons are full of the wicked people. The mention of their name is not a blessing to us, is it? Mention of their name reminds us just how bad, how sinful we as people can be. And so we have this contrast in our own lives, which is mirrored here in the Proverbs. Contrast between good and evil, between right and wrong. If you're a good thinking, right thinking person, you will be a blessing to other people. If you're a bad thinking, poor thinking, wrong acting person, you won't be a blessing at all. You'll be the opposite. You'll be a distraction. You'll be a shame. You will be all the other things that we don't want to concentrate on. Two different types of people, one of which we are called to be a right thinking, righteous person, the other and wrong thinking, wicked person. Who are you going to be? Who? What sort of legacy are you going to leave to your family, your friends, your kinfolk, your townspeople? Well, we all hope to leave that former understanding, that former understanding of righteousness before God. How are we going to do that? Pick up his word each day and read it. Get together with others who believe the same thing and enjoy wonderful fellowship. I know it's difficult during lockdown, but we can still do it over the phone or in Zoom or in email or in letter. So don't give up. Keep on keeping on being the people we need to be. Bye for now.